All right, good morning, everybody. We are here on Tuesday, November 24th. We are uh, getting ready to do a great wad for today. We have some one arm unilateral work with some squat cleans and some shouldered overhead and some carry holds. Um, we of course have our 50 unbroken Russian kettlebell swings, which we're doing for the month of the, the November. I just want to do a couple of quick demonstrations on movements for you before we get going. Some of these we've done before. Uh, in the warm up, we're going to do a two handed dumbbell or kettlebell squat clean. And so, if you have your dumbbell, or if you have a kettlebell rather, you're going to start with your hands on the top. And from the ground, you're going to pull it up and slide your hands around to the side. So you're gonna move them from here to here and do a full squat clean. So here to here, stand up with it. If you have a dumbbell, you're gonna do the same kind of thing. You're gonna start by cupping the head of the dumbbell and then when you go under it, you're gonna switch and put your hands around. So we would go from here to here, stand up with it, hands go back under here, and here. So you're just kind of doing that motion to get underneath it. We're gonna do a two-handed shoulder to overhead. And so if you're using your dumbbell, you will hold the heads, shoulder to overhead any way you want, push press, push jerk, strip press. If you're holding a kettlebell, you can hold it by the horns. You can flip it around and hold it by the bell. That's all fine. We are going to do a front rack carry, which you can kind of hold it with two hands sideways with the kettlebell. They're both dumbbell heads. And then the last move I want to demo real quickly is an alternate linear plank tap. So we're going to be down and we've done kind of our shoulder taps and we've done side to side. We're just gonna tap in front, tap in front. Sometimes we've done these with kettlebells or dumbbells in front of us. Later on, we're gonna add a dumbbell or a kettlebell and we're actually gonna drag it front and back. So that's a little bit different move for us. And I think that's it for the warm up. So go ahead and grab, uh, again, sort of a light-ish kettlebell or dumbbell, something that's good to warm up with. If you're outside like I am, it is cold and we need to get these joints going. And we're gonna get going in about 10 seconds. You're also starting off with cardio. So row, ski, bike, whatever machine you have. If you have a machine at home, running is okay. Jump roping is okay. Burpees are okay. Since it's cold out and we don't want to be opening the garage door, we're going to be doing burpees in here, or I am anyway, Nicole may bike. Um, but we're starting off with our cardio, and then we're going to get into those movements that I demoed. All right, so take a second to get set up. I'm going to get the clock ready. Get my weights in place. And we are gonna go in 10 seconds, starting with your cardio. In three, two, one, go. Nice and easy to start. Just waking everything up. Three, two, one. Rest. So now grab your dumbbell or kettlebell, whichever one you're starting with. 
And we're going to go with those two handed squat cleans. In three, two, one. So we're lifting from the ground, shrug it up, hands go underneath, full squat. Touch the weight. You're using the dumbbell, both heads touch. Switch again with that dumbbell. Or, I'm sorry, single head touches. My mistake. Just thinking about the actual movement. And rest. All right, next one is going to the shoulder to overhead. So, again, with your dumbbell, you're just going to go ahead and grab both heads. And any way over is fine. Strip press, go. A little push press with a little dip drive is probably what a lot of us are gonna wind up doing during the workout. To keep moving through reps. During the workout, we're gonna have five single arm squat cleans. Five shoulder overhead on the same arm, and then a front rack carry on the same arm. And then we're gonna to switch to the other side. One, and rest. Now we're gonna do a front rack carry. In the workout, you're gonna be carrying for 25 feet. So I know my mat is about six feet, so I'm just gonna walk back and forth. You could also just march in place. So front rack, get that up on your shoulders, elbows are forward. So you can march in place if you are in a space where there's not a lot of room or you can't measure out. If you're walking, you can count 25 steps is good. Or I know I'm gonna do four lengths of my mat and a little extra, maybe five, just to keep it honest. Two, one, and down. Now we're gonna get on the floor. I'm gonna try those plank taps. Again, just tap it in front of us, regular high plank position. Widen and narrow your feet to make it less or more challenging. And then just tap in front. Really concentrate on your core. You don't want your hips going all over the place. Widen your fleet feet if they're wiggling too much. And tap in front, bring it back. Really brace everything as you're reaching. Two, one. We're gonna stay on the floor right here and go to our weightless Russian twists with our feet on the ground. All right, lock your fingers, back is straight. We're turning and facing our hands as they touch the ground. So really make sure that collarbone is turning with your hands. A little lean to engage the core. Try not to round the back too much. Two, one, and rest. All right, it's starting to warm up a little bit. A little bit. 
All right. We're going to keep the warm up going and get right into our 50 swings. So again, you have your kettlebell. Start with the bell, basically in between your feet more towards the front. You're going to hike it back between your legs first, drive through the ground, locking out your hips and quads, and just let that bell float up to your shoulders. This is a lower body movement, hip drive. If you don't have a kettlebell, you're going to use the dumbbell and do the same principle movement. When you're coming down, always hike it down first and place the bell down to protect your back. Your goal is to do 50 unbroken in less than three minutes. If your weight is heavy and 50 is a challenge, scale it back to 30 unbroken. And we're gonna start in 10 seconds. I'm gonna try and keep better count this week. Three, two, one, go. All right, definitely feeling that in my forearms and my hands are kind of burning from the coldness of the kettlebell. <laughs> All right, grab a sip. You should definitely be warm now. Nothing gets that breath going like 50 swings in the morning. This will be the last swings on Zoom because by next week we'll be in December. Uh, all right, let me talk you through the wad a little bit. So what we have are four five minute intervals with two and a half minutes of rest. So a two to one work to rest ratio four times through, what are you gonna do in that time? So for the five minutes, you're gonna go through and do five squat cleans, either with a kettlebell or a dumbbell, single arm. So on your right side, coming up from the ground, both heads are touching. You're gonna bring the weight up Get under it, one. Just bring it down, touch both heads, two, five of those. Then you're gonna do five. Oh, sorry, that was a three minute timer from the uh, kettlebell. You're gonna do five shoulder to overhead on the same arm. So you can strip press. I mentioned most of, most of us will probably do a push press. If you start getting tired, rounds three, four, do oops a push jerk okay so five five then 25 feet of a front rack carry so you can count 25 steps if you don't have your distance measured out you can march for 25 steps then you're gonna go right into the left side 
five squat cleans, five shoulder to overhead, 25 foot farmer's carry, then into your, I'm sorry, not farmer's carry, front rack hold, thank you. Then you're gonna go into your cardio, 200 meter run ski or row, 0.5 or 0.4 K bike, one minute of jump rope, or eight to 12-ish burpees, depending on how quickly you cycle through them. Can, can you show the one arm, um, the, the one arm move again? The squat clean, yeah. The squat absolutely. clean, yeah. Does, do you start in the center or? I do, I, I like to start in between the legs here with both heads touching and I'm coming up, cleaning it to get under, squat and stand. So think about that shrug coming up. And as you shrug, you're gonna get under it and stand up with it. So five on one side, then you'll go into your five, then your 25 feet of carry, then five on this side, five, 25 feet of carry, and then whatever your cardio is. When you get to the top of the cardio and you finish, you go right back to the top of the workout. It's AMRAP for the five minutes. We okay, get two and a half minutes break when we start up in round two, you're gonna pick up where you left off. So if you were on five squat cleans on the left and you got three of them, when you start the next round, you'll finish the two and then keep going from there. And you're starting the squat clean from the ground every time, right? Every time. Yep. Okay. Thanks. So yeah, bring it up and then lower it, bring it down to touch. Yep, exactly. Uh, pick a weight so that you could do all your reps unbroken. You shouldn't really be breaking up five reps of anything unless the timer goes off and you're in between rounds. Uh, I already mentioned, start the next round where you left off. You're subbing 25 steps for every carry. Weights recommended RX are 50 and 35. And RX plus is an overhead carry as opposed to a front rack carry. So everything else is the same though. I'm just getting the timer set, but if you wanna shoot out some questions, go for it. I have one question, Eric. For the first um, shoulder to overhead, can that be like a thruster or no? You know what I mean? Oh, as you're going from the squat clean into the first shoulder overhead, I would think yeah. absolutely. Okay, great, thanks. Yep. Yep, that's a good question. So we are doing four rounds. Sorry, this is a little, uh, four rounds. We're doing five minutes of work and we're doing two minutes, 30 seconds of rest. All right, so I'll do the first round or I'll do the first probably five minutes with y'all. And um, I'll be queuing throughout the way just to keep remembering what to do. Once you get into the routine, you'll be fine. Just know that you keep repeating right side, left side cardio, right side, left side cardio. All right, Does everyone have their weights, everyone good to go? Know what they're doing for cardio. I got the timer ready. So we are doing four rounds of five minutes of work, two th minutes, 30 seconds of rest, one arm squat cleans, shouldered overhead, front rack carry and cardio. And we are starting in 10 seconds with those squat cleans. Two, one, go.
feel like I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> Side, left side, cardio. A little over halfway through, first round. Everybody's looking good. Under a minute. All right, here's your rest. 2.30, make a note of where you got to so you know where to pick up on the next round. Woo! Everybody look good. Any questions? You should have an idea. Roughly, probably in the two and a half to three rounds-ish people got, I'm guessing. So now you can adjust your pace. You don't want to track off. If you went too hot, adjust. If you know you could give a little more, go for it. You don't want to drop off by rounds three and four though. You want to keep it consistent. 
I forgot to do one of my farmer's carries or my overhead carries. So I did both of them together just to make up. It's okay if you get them mixed up, just make up the work. A minute and a half left to rest. I'm gonna grab some wristbands for kettlebell work. Whoo. Anyone have any questions? Y'all looked pretty good on everything. Just keep thinking about quality of movement, getting that squat depth, sinking into that squat, getting under the weight and dropping under it. Full extension overhead. If you didn't, you're picking up wherever you left off. So I did seven burpees, I'm doing 12. So I'm gonna start with five burpees and then go right up to my right arm shoulder to overhead. Whew, about 30 seconds left. Grab a sip, stay hydrated. High quality. We're going in 10. Three, two, one, go. Oh, no, five burpees. in the walk. Really brace yourself on those carries.
Just under a minute. Halfway. Good work. Make a note of where you are. Grab a sip, control your breath. Two and a half minutes is a good long break. So we should go pretty good. We're moving at a pretty good clip for the five minutes. Woo. Depending on your cardio, coming into that first set of squat cleans, a little spicy on the legs, but once you get through those five, shoulder overhead and the carry, give your legs a little break before you get into the next five. So I like how this is programmed during the circuit. Halfway done, third and fourth round. Really focus on your core bracing. One thing I noticed in terms of quality technique is I started lowering my kettlebell before I came all the way up out of the squat clean. So make sure, this is, so I didn't notice any of you doing this, but I noticed myself, so I'm just giving you a note. When you come out of your squat clean, before you lower that weight, make sure you hit full extension, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, all in line, before you lower to go into that next rep. Oh man, 30 seconds left. Remember where you picked off or left off. I, I started at the beginning, I almost started at the beginning again <laughs> when the timer went off. All right, get your minds right, 10 seconds, here we go. Three. Two, one, go.
when you're doing those carries, remember that's active work all through your body. Got this. 90 seconds. Three, two, one, rest. All right. Woo. Last round coming up. Lost my hat in that one. Kettlebells don't feel cold anymore. You were right, Susan. <laughs> You guys are doing great. One more round. Then we got a nice core finisher. And as usual, a little mobility to finish up. Woo, some deep breaths just to catch your breath. Starting to iron our turkey and our stuffing and our mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie and all, whatever your favorite dishes are, put in the work. <laughs> Just about one minute, make sure you're maximizing your rest. A couple deep breaths in and out. You can do a little, like we do at the end of the workout, a little deep breath, expand those lungs. Take control of your breath. Try to go only in and out through your nose. As you start getting tired in the wide, in the circuit, think about your breath. Our ability to recover while we're moving is what's gonna help us advance and put up some better numbers and hit some better scores. 10 seconds, I don't remember where I was. I think on the one arm carry. Last round, three, two, one, go.
Keep up with it. <sighs> 90 seconds. You're doing great. Finish strong. Thirty seconds. And three, two. One. Woo! Good work. Oh, that was fun. A lot of burpees. <laughs> Felt like we were doing an hour of burpees for a second there. All right. Note your scores. I didn't look in ZP, but I'm pretty sure it's total rounds and reps, but I may be wrong on that. All right. We are going into a true Tabata now. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds of work as our finisher. Whew, I'm just resetting the timer. We're doing two moves. The first move is that linear drag. And if you remember in the beginning, I said, we're gonna be adding a weight to that. Second move is weighted Russian twist with our feet on the floor. So with the linear drag, your weight is gonna start underneath you in the middle. Get a little bit lower here. Make sure we're getting the full the full view here. So weights in the middle, you're going to bring it up, bring it back, bring it up, bring it back. So in the beginning we were tapping. Here we're dragging the weight, kind of like we do side to side. We're just going forward and back, switching arms every time. All right, and then we're going to do our Russian twist with weight this time. So if you have a kettlebell by the horns, if you have a dumbbell, I usually like to hold it vertically to keep my fingers from touching the ground or getting smashed between the weight. All right, so get yourself set up on the floor, get your weight. We're starting in 10. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Drag it up, drag it back. Up, back, up, back. Now because you're in three points of contact, you really gotta brace your hips. All right, on the butt. Remember feet are staying on the ground for this Russian twist. Go. Turning the shoulders all the way every time. Rest. 
Rotate back. Just these two moves, three more times each. Go. Nice and deliberate with the movement. Slow and methodical. With that kind of movement, moving slow and, and, and being really deliberate is actually better. Go. Switch. Halfway. Go. The twists. Go. Switch. Last round on these planks. Go. And last twist. Just enough time for six minutes of mobility. Just stay where you are on the floor and follow along with me while we cool down. On the seat, spread those legs out into a pancake position as wide as you can. What we're gonna do is lean over and kind of reach over, turn your torso up towards the sky a little bit. So you're really feeling the stretch in your low back and in your like side obliques. I can't quite do it because I'm not super mobile, but my shoulder should be going up towards the sky, kind of reaching over the side. I'm actually using my right arm to help turn my body a little bit. And just breathe, releasing that low back. All right, work your way towards the center and just reach as far as you can. Relaxing into it. Take a deep breath in your belly and let it out and stretch from your back all the way from the base of your spine. Let your head hang, roll your arms, roll your back out.
It's okay to wiggle around and get comfortable in it as you get more breath and you find a different spot. Settle in, feel different tension. I have hold more tension in my right side, so I focus on relaxing through my right. And go ahead and go to that left side. Really open up your chest towards the sky. Again, I'm kind of using my left arm against my left leg to really help with that opening. And I feel it all the way down my lower right lumbar, my obliques. About 20 more seconds, stay there. Breathe and reach. All right, come out of it. We're gonna pull our legs in into like a really nice classic spinal twist. So get in a good position, plant that right hand. So my right leg is over my left quad. My right hand is back towards my glute. Put my elbow onto my right leg and turn. Really focusing on keeping a straight spine. You don't want to curve and, and be bending. Think about sitting straight up like there's a string pulling from your tailbone, through your spine, through your head, straight to the ceiling. A lot of low back mobility and stretching today. And then just every breath, turn a little more into it. Just come out, give yourself a little counter stretch. Switch the legs, right legs forward, hugging that left knee in towards your body, left hand planted, right elbow, I'm sitting as upright as I can, and just keep looking back until I can see Nicole behind me. Again, keep adjusting as you get deeper into it, every breath. Come out of that with just a touch of a counter stretch. And just drop both legs. We're going to finish off. We don't always have to be fancy, just a nice forward fold. Start with a deep breath upright. And breathe out and reach out. And just let everything hang into it. I find if I bring my feet up, I get a little bit different stretch through my hamstrings. It's all right if you have a little bend to your knee. You don't have to have your knees locked out. I got a dorsiflex in my feet, so my toes are coming back towards me. And as I breathe out and relax, I'm going deeper in. I'm letting my body relax more. Thinking about letting my head hang naturally. And roll out of it. We did it again, everybody. Congratulations on a great day, great morning routine. I hope you feel as good as I do. Um, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you, happy Thanksgiving. Happy holiday, and we'll be back here, I think probably next Tuesday again, but um, look out for the email. Should feel great about the work you put in as always. Hey, Eric, I had a question on how we score this. Yes. Um, 
So like on the last one, I was like in the bike. So I don't know, do I do like- Let me see if you put any notes in here. Okay. Real quickly. Because you know, actually she hasn't been, for some of these movements, she hasn't actually been putting in the score. Let me see, my Zen planner's taken like- Yeah, it shows for the score, but to, I didn't know that I did- To eight. warm up here. But, I but um, what she's been doing in the recent workouts was that 10 meters equal to rep. So if we're if it's supposed to be about a 200, then I would think that oh, my, my application isn't working. I don't recall seeing any notes about the score in there, but that's what we've been doing in workouts recently. So I would just go ahead and count it as 20 and then we'll double check. And if there's any mistakes, we'll just correct it. Okay. Sounds if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, so it'd be 20 plus 20 more because I did the walk. So it'd actually be 40. And then I was almost done with the bike, but I didn't finish it. So I just won't count the bike though, right? Okay, that's fine. Okay. I think that's fine. Okay. More so importantly is that you got the work in than the score in, in, the, end of the, in the real scheme. It. It. it just seemed awkward. Okay, I got it. All right, great. All right, everybody, be safe out there. Have a great week. Have a great holiday. Stay active, stay mobile, and I will see you next time. All right, enjoy your holiday. Take have care. Have a good Thanksgiving, everyone. Yep. All right. Bye bye. Later.